Welcome class, have a seat. We're gonna to talk to you today about something a little bit more serious than my normal videos. I haven't done one of these in a while. Um, one of these confession videos, wanted to do that um, for a while. And uh, wanted to, uh, you know, bring it up, talk about it really. And basically what it talks about is depression and suicide. And it kind of come up because I was we were uh, it was kind of been on my heart since last week, and um, you know I was looking at this um, Whisper app and just kind of perusing, and I see a lot of young people, uh, especially young people. There are a lot of older people, a lot of young people who are dealing with depression and anxiety and um, suicide, thoughts of suicide. And I wanted to um, come at you today from a Christian's perspective. Christian perspective because you know we think when we talk about Christians or Christianity and we think to ourselves you know Christians don't go through that kind of thing and this is not something that we do um, when in fact we do but we just don't talk about it as much because we try to put on this air this facade that you know we don't have any faults or that we don't have those types of th thoughts we don't have those type of thoughts um, but I can tell you as a believer, as a Christian, that I have had those thoughts and, um, you know, especially around about the time of, you know, when I was a younger man, when I was a teenager, you know, we had those thoughts, you know, you think about well, life would be so much better without me or, you know, the world would be better if I wasn't here. I wish I were, you know, wish I were dead, those type of things, um, you know, and you may you may have had those thoughts. You may not have had those thoughts. I know for me growing up as a teen, I, I did have those thoughts. Um, and, you know, as I'm older, I can't say I had them when I was older, up until after, you know, around about the time of, the, of my divorce, um, you know, I started having, I had those thoughts. And, you know, at the time, my friends at the time, you know, may may or may not have been aware of that. I'm thinking that they all, and they're probably watching this now, and probably, you know, probably thinking, wow, I didn't know that. Um, you know, but it's because I had my friends, you know, around that it helped me cope. Um, and it helped me n not have those thoughts and those urges um, to to pursue um, suicide, and it helped lessen the depression and anxiety I had uh, I had about life at that time. Um, and you know, like I said, I, I was going through divorce, um, and it hurt me pretty bad because um, it was kind of unexpected, and the way it came about was just really was out of the blue. But it puts, you know, as I as I said in two other videos on on divorce, you know, it, it divorce kind of puts you, it 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 does something to you, and from a mental aspect, it can, you know, if you don't surround yourself around people who love you, if you don't surround your people who are when always who are going to check up on you and ask you and how you're doing, how you're feeling, is there anything I can do for you that are going to encourage you and, you know. Um, and you be in a position where you want people to to check up on you because you know that's how the enemy works you know he wants us to exclude us and separate us from those that love us and to get us isolated and by ourselves where our own mind can um get wrap us up in the thoughts where that's where the enemy wants us he wants us wrapped up in our own thoughts where we get so confused and we don't know if we're coming or going and then those then he's able to pour in those thoughts of you should kill yourself you know why the world hates you nobody loves you you're worthless you're pitiful and you know i struggled that for a while because you know as a you know um you know here i am you know i was a father a husband you know had a certain role i was a leader in the church and to lose all that at one time and you know i I felt like a failure. I did. Um, you know, it, because it all, because, you know, this is the life I set. You know, you know, marriage is that kind of thing where it's it's, it's finite. You know, you think marriage is forever. Um, you know, till death do us part. And, you know, it was over. And, you know, the ministry I was belonging to, I was no longer in. Um, the friends, the married, the friends I had at the church, you know, I was no longer friends with. Um, or was separated from, and you know I wasn't working, 
And of course, then I had then I had my two kids I had to take care of. And you know, here I am, you know, struggling, trying to find a place to stay. I'm moving back and forth, you know, not eating, you know. I mean, it was just so much. And you know, depression set in. And you know, where I didn't want to get up, I didn't want to go anywhere, I didn't want to do anything, I didn't want to talk to anybody. Um, and you know, it really gets to a point where you start having those thoughts in your head where you're just like, man, you know, Cliff, you know, it's just not working, man. You know, we gotta, you know, there's no point. You know, you lost everything. You, you, your goal was to, where you, what you had was your life's goal and you had it and you lost it. There's nothing else after this moment. There's nothing left. The, you, you had the best job. You had the best family. You had the, everything was going well for you and you lost it. There's no point in going on. There's no reason for going on. So you should just call it the game over. And on the other side, on the other hand, on the other side, I had, you know, I, I really didn't, I didn't, I just didn't see anything. I didn't see any hope. I didn't. Um, only thing I had, only thing that, only thing that got me out of the bed was that I had these two, they had these two kids that I had to provide what I had, I couldn't leave behind this legacy of quitting. I couldn't leave them behind knowing that I gave up on them. Because I already felt like I gave up myself. I already felt like I was a failure in God's eyes. I was already a failure in my own eyes. I was a failure to my friends and family, was a failure in my marriage. You know, I, that's how I felt. That's just how I felt at the time. But here I have my little boy, my little girl, who needed me? They needed their father. I can't. There are too many. Because I, I kept thinking in my mind, there are too many people in the world who grew up without a father. And there, mind you, there are some who grew up great, even though the father figure is not there. But here I am, and I can't. I didn't. I couldn't see myself depriving my kids of that. Um. And so you know, the, and you know, and that and that was always that constant battle, that struggle that was going on at the time. Um. And you know, now I don't have those thoughts. I don't have those thoughts, and. My depression, you know, depression at that time was pretty, pretty, um, you know, at least in my mind, it felt that way. Um, didn't go to the doctor, didn't even seek therapy or help for anything like that. Um, you know, do I get depression now? No, I don't. Um, do I have suicidal thoughts now? No, I don't. Um, you know, but I want, I, I share this with you just to say that, you know, we as believers, we go through stuff just like everybody else does. People think that Christians are these perfect people. We're not. We're, we have things that go on with us just like you. We go through things just like you do. Um, you know, though I did not want to be a statistic, but there, here I am. Um, but I share this with you that if you're watching this and if you ever had thoughts of suicide or if you've ever been depressed or anxiety about life, you're not alone. You are not alone. You are not by yourself. And if you are going through things right now, don't isolate yourself. Don't allow yourself to sit at home in the in your bedroom and allow and, and, and try to and allow the enemy to think that you can work it out on your own. Because you will not it, it will not happen. Your thoughts will just start running away with you and eventually you're going to start acting on these thoughts. That is not the will of God for you. So I encourage you that if you have anybody that you trust that you can confide in, please do so. You know, it just takes, you know, I know sometimes we want to put on this facade and we don't want people to ask how we're doing, what's going on with us, but you got to be able to open up. I know that you're hurt. I know you're in pain. I know you just don't think anybody under, can understand what you're going through, but I promise you there are people out there who do and can and will understand what you're going through. You know, and if you're going through, if you're going through depression or you're having anxiety, there there's a number that's been on the bottom of the screen. I encourage you to call, you know, to, to and, and seek help. If you go to a church, if you know any pastors or anybody or a friend or whoever, please call them and get help. Please talk to somebody. I don't want you to end your life. It's not worth it. You have so much that you're here to accomplish in the earth. You have so much, so many people that you're going to, whose lives need to be touched by yours and your testimony of how you overcame depression and anxiety and those thoughts of suicide. I share this with you. I'm here because I just want you to understand that Christians go through it too. Believers go through it too. We go through heartache. We go through pain. 
we have symptoms in our body, we have symptoms, illnesses in our mind. We go through thought, through through thr through droughts of loneliness. We go through spells of fatigue. We go through, you know, just as anybody else does. We go through. We experience these things, and even the Bible tells us that Christ experienced everything as we did, so that he so that he could better understand who what he's giving his life for, what he gave his life for. And so, if Christ could go through, have those those to experience those things surely we in our in our natural who are not who are, are working to become more christ-like surely we are not above those things uh, above experiencing those things either i hope if you're watching this this helped bless you in some way you know talking about it getting it off your chest but i want to tell you that you know yeah i've experienced depression i experienced you know uh, thoughts of suicide anxiety and you know, not wanting to get out of bed and, and crying and just crying, you know, and not eating and losing 20, 30 pounds just because of the stress that um, that's associated with depression and anxiety and, and, and loneliness and, and, and just fear and just everything that comes with it. But I hope that you know that there is help. And, you know, if you want to connect with me, if you say you have nobody else, then, you know, leave me a comment in my inbox, leave a comment you know, on my page or, or, you know, whatever, contact me. If you have nobody else, there's a way, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, whatever, contact me. If you can't get a hold of anybody, I want you to get help. I want to, be, I want you to have peace of mind. I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to be hoping that you are well. And I'm a hope that you know that every day is a new day to experience God all over again. I know this message finds you well, blessed, and highly favored. And I know that this message finds you in the truth of God's love. I'm Clifton. This is Cliff Notes. Class dismissed.